rise against the manor where tyranny is born, rich and poor, the gallery goes. of pheasants, and you'll taste none better in all England. Mmm, delicious, mine host. You've done nobly. Are you hurt? Not a scratch, thanks to your timely interference and that plucky animal of mine. Mm. My lord links our deeds together. I hope you're as honored as I am. What do you call her? Juno. Are you a friend to go, Juno? Not always, as you've just witnessed. I wish she seems to like you. Tell me, my lord, have you any idea who your attackers were? The crests on their tabards were obviously disguised. <laughs> Equally obviously, they were followers of Prince John. They were after a large sum of gold that I'm taking to London to aid King Richard's cause. You know, I've heard that I've been traveling the length and breadth of the country for months now, raising money from those nobles who are loyal to King Richard. When we have a sufficient amount, we hope to raise a company of men and send them in search of Richard, who, as you know, is a prisoner somewhere in Europe. Well, Malcolm, we'll take no more risks with that treasure of ours. Bring it inside. Yes, my lord. Will you join me for lunch, my lord? I'd be delighted. Cheer up, landlord. The fight was like the old lady's dance. Short and sweet and no damage done. Uh, fetch some wine for the elevation. Yes, Sir Ivno. Excuse me, Sir Ivno. Did you say this gentleman was the Earl of Ashington? Oh, I did. Why do you ask? From Sir Wendell of Melchester. He said if your lordship was to pass this way, I was to give you this. Thank you. Oh, I'm surprised you know Wendell of Melchester, my lord. Oh, boy. Well, it's been rumored that he has shifted his allegiance from King Richard to Prince John. A rumor without foundation. He asks that I be his guest before I proceed to London. Indeed, he wishes to make a contribution to King Richard's cause. All the same, I should be reluctant to trust him absolutely. Where shall I put the box, my lord? Over there, Malcolm. Thank you. My lord, I ask permission to travel with you to London. Well, always happy to share your company, I have no, but why? Well, one attempt has been made to rob you, there may be others. I wouldn't like that to happen. <laughs> Neither should I. Permission granted. Thank you, my lord. Oh, hello, Juno. Well, you have indeed made a friend, haven't you? <laughs> so it seems. Yes. Try this pill, my lord, and see if it does not relieve the pain in your stomach. Thank you, apothecary, but nothing will relieve the pain in my stomach but, but that incompetent fool's head at the end of a pole. You were sent to ambush Ashington while he was still on the high road. Why didn't you do it? He quit the high road before he reached us, my lord, and took a path through the forest. Before we discovered it, he was almost at the inn. You could have robbed him at the inn. That was our hope, my lord. Had we not encountered the knight Ivanhoe? Ivanhoe? Are you sure it was Ivanhoe? Aye, my lord. That's what the Earl of Ashington called him. Very well, you may go. You too, apothecary. I sent him an invitation to visit us. But I merely used it as an alibi in case I was accused of his murder. 
I didn't think he'd be alive to receive it. It was fortunate that you took such a precaution. I know now which is the bitterest pill to swallow. That of my apothecaries or my soldiers. Maybe your soldier's pill is not as bitter as my lord thinks. Perhaps it can even be made to taste sweet. How so? Ashington thinks you are still loyal to Richard. When he arrives on the morrow, greet him graciously, give him the gold he expects, and then rob him. In such a fashion that he need never know that he's been robbed. You pick a strange time to jest, Master Timon. I do not jest, my lord. Perhaps my lord would be kind enough to tell me the difference between these two coins. I see no difference in them. Look carefully, my lord. I'm not blind, man. I tell you, I see no difference in them. But the fact is that one is counterfeit. Which one? The one with the lighter ring is counterfeit. The man that made that coin can make hundreds of such coins requiring no more gold than is in this chalice. And when we have those coins, it should not be difficult to substitute them for the genuine ones that Ashington is bringing with him. Who is this man? A minter named Brooke, long skilled in the art of making coins for the king's treasurer. Is he to be trusted? Ah, you are asking, does he hate Richard? He does. Why? Failing to please the treasurer, he had his hand cut off at the wrist and nailed upon his door. Where is he now? In hiding in the town of Chichester. I like your plan, Master Timon. Send for the Minter with one hand. We'll make use of his services and pay him well. When my Lord Treasurer deprived me of my left hand, he little thought that he was taking one tool only to provide me with another. These are ready. There you are, my Lord. Nine-tenths base metal, one-tenth gold. But who would know the difference? Not even King Richard himself. Unless he presented one to a coin maker as clever as myself. Well done, Master Brock. Uh, thank you, Sir Winter. Ashington. Uh, when does my lord want the rest of the coins? Uh, not later than midnight. You shall have them. Don't you know? Mind your manners, we're in company now. <coughs> That's it. My compliments, my lord, and welcome to Belchester Castle. And mind you, my lord. Allow me to present a friend of mine, Sir Ivanhoe. My compliments, Sir Ivanhoe. And mind you, Sir Wendell. Here's a box, my lord. Ah, thank you, Gerth. If my lord will allow, I would like the box kept in the castle vault during my stay. But of course, my lord. Well, forgive me, Ashington, I have a better idea. Have Gerth take the box to your room and place it at the foot of the bed. With respect, uh, Sir Ivanhoe, what makes you think it a better idea? Oh, no offense, Sir Wendell, but Ashington and I have been entrusted with a mission. And we would feel happier not to have to force you to share any of the burden of responsibility. Well, if you think so, Ivanhoe. I do, my lord. My lord. We must think of something, Simon. I'm doing my best, my lord. If I'd known of Ivanhoe's intention, I'd have put Ashington in the tower room. That at least has a secret passage and we could make the exchange without interference. Perhaps I can still suggest it. And further arouse Ivanhoe's suspicions. No, we must do something better than that. If my lord will drink this. What is it? An opiate to soothe my lord's nerves and make you relax. Relax? Relax, that's all I'm told. I'm sick of your pills and potions. Get out! Get out, I say. One moment, apothecary. You say that this opiate that you have just prepared would soothe my lord's nerves. Have you an opiate that would put him into a deep sleep? I have such an opiate, Master Timon. Is it in your bag? Yes. What are its after effects? If administered properly, none whatsoever. What is this treachery? And could you give it to my lord without his knowing it, say by putting it in his food? has no taste, so that would be possible. I repeat, what is this? Timon, I demand an explanation. Tonight, Ivanhoe and Ashington will share your board. Gerth, too, must have his supper. Yes, go on. This is the idea we've been waiting for. When they're asleep, we go to Ashington's room, remove the box, 
exchange the counterfeit coins for the genuine ones and return the box. A superb meal, Sir Wendell. Oh, why am I suddenly so sleepy? Well, you've traveled a long distance today and food always makes one sleepy. You too, Ivanhoe. Forgive me, my lord. I can't think why I'm so tired. As you are leaving early in the morning, you probably wish to retire to your chambers. I should like to give you a toast. To King Richard. Ah. King Richard. To King Richard. Master Tyman, the purse. Not as much as I should like to give you, Ashington, but um, I doubt if there's that much gold in England. I hope it will help a little. Thank you, my lord. On behalf of myself and King Richard. And now, Ivanhoe, are you still so ready to listen to rumors? Uh, what rumors have you been hearing, Sir Ivanhoe? Well, it has been rumored that certain nobles are thinking of offering their allegiance to Prince John, and that you are among them. I'm glad there's no truth in it, and I apologize for even thinking there might be. Handsomely spoken, Ivanhoe. And now, Wendell, would you think us very rude if we went to bed? Not at all. Page, escort my lords to their chambers. Good night, Wendell. Come, Ivanhoe. Lord. Uh, uh. Uh, everything all right, Gaz? Oh, everything all right, sir. Oh, except that Juno wouldn't eat your supper tonight. Oh, why not, Juno? Weren't you hungry? <laughs> Just as well. Fred, you and I ate too much, Ivanhoe. Well, good night. Good night, my lord. Good night, Gaz. Good night, Ivanhoe. Why do you suppose a hungry dog like Juno wouldn't eat her supper? I don't know, my lord. What did you say? I said I didn't know why, my lord. Unless it's the reason most dogs don't want to eat bad or poisoned food. Why would anyone want to poison a dog like Juno? I don't know, my lord. Good. For you, I'd have slept all through the night. That's something I'm sure Wendell would have liked very much. Go on, where's Gertrude? We'll find him. Who's that? Ivanhoe. What is it, lad? It's odd. What's odd? The girl's all there? Just a moment ago, the box was brought back here and, and taken out by Master Timon and two of Wendell's men. But the girl's all there, Ivanhoe. It's... Wait. Why is it so bright? I don't know why. 
I mean to find out. Here, Juno. Smell. Smell, Juno. Smell. Good, Juno. Come on, Juno. Juno. Wendell was willing to make his contribution. New Ashington wouldn't keep it for long. Ivanhoe, you're in a difficult position, but I'm prepared to release you on one condition. That you keep what you know to yourself. And if I don't? I shall have you put to death. Murder is not so easily concealed, not even in Prince John's England. And at this moment, Ashington awaits me in his chamber. Should I remain absent indefinitely, he will begin to make inquiries. It won't be difficult to explain your absence to Ashington. Give me that seal of yours. Give me that seal. Or would you prefer my men to take it from you, just as the coin maker had his hand taken from him? Dear Ashington, I have received a very urgent message to go to London immediately. Tell Gerth he is to come along with you. You'll find him a good man in any emergency. Ivanhoe. When did you get this? From the Seneschal, just a few minutes ago, my lord. Oh, well, you may go. May I, my lord? Yes. I don't understand it, Gerth. This note wasn't written by Sir Ivanhoe, my lord. It's got his seal on it. Yeah, that's true. But it hasn't got our secret mark on the top left-hand corner. But Ivanhoe was here less than an hour ago, looking at the money. If you ask me, my lord, somebody wants us out the way. And I'm afraid Sir Ivanhoe has been taken prisoner. Wendell. Blast him. I'll have his ears for this and his neck, too. Oh, my lord forgets that we're outnumbered. No. The best plan would be to pretend that we believe this note and to make our departure. Once we've gone, Sir Wendell will think that he successfully tricked us. And he won't expect my return. That's a good idea, Gareth. We'll do it. Come again, Ashington. And when in London, give Sir Ivanhoe my best. Thank you, I will. Once again, thank you for your hospitality. I'd like to borrow some of your tools, such as this and this. Well, I don't know about that. It's all right. I'll bring them back. And his lordship will pay you handsomely. Pay? Ah, that'd be different. Come on, then. Come on, speak, you Yeah. 
Outside the kitchen, there was a cart. See if it's still there. If it is, fetch it. Right. Come on, Juno. We're going to find Wendell. Count it yourself before putting it in the vault. Well, plenty of time for that later. First, we have to decide how to get rid of Ivan. Sure, I'll get it.
with speed of lightning, bold and brave and gay. In justice he is fighting to win a better day. Shout a cheer, adventure is here.